Hey, Mr. Alra here. We've been solving systems of equations. We went through substitution method, elimination method, um, and we got where the systems would find their intersections. Um, but I want to show you two other outcomes, which when people see them, they may get scared if they're not familiar with them. Um, but I have two graphs here. So the left one is two lines. And what you might say about this from geometry is they are parallel lines, if you look at them, because they don't intersect. Um, they look just like two straight lines with the same slope. So they have no common point, uh, which means they don't have a solution. We call this inconsistent. And sometimes we'll write that as an empty set, looks like a zero with a slash through it empty set if you're not familiar with that notation um, but that's more of a no solution type of thing uh, and the software we use for this class um, usually you see the empty set symbol but those two lines don't have a common point they are offset everywhere now the second graph on the right um, you can't tell it uh, from what we have here, but really what I have here is the two different lines graphed, but they are basically the same graph. So the equations may have looked different, but they plotted out the same way. So basically this is one line on top of the other line, so they're the same line. Um, so every point on the line is a solution to the uh, system. So it has infinite solutions and we call this dependent. And we'll explain that in a second. Um, and if you're talking about regular lines, straight lines, you might call these parallel lines. But <clears throat> you could have multiple solutions if they weren't straight lines, but uh, you'd only get like infinite solutions here or dependent system if they were parallel lines. I spelled parallel wrong. Let's just cross through it. Alright, so let's go to what we're talking about here. So, uh, when solving a system of equations, and you can use substitution or eliminate, elimination, but if both variables cancel out, so remember we're thinking about starting with an x and a y, and either when we put them on top of each other with the elimination and add them together, um, both the x and the y cancel out, or maybe when we do substitution, we plug one in for the other, and then when we combine like terms, uh, the other one cancels out. So basically we're just left with some numbers. And we saw this um, with um, linear equations when we first started of one variable where we got no solution or all real numbers. Um, but if both variables cancel out, we have an inconsistent system if what's left is not equal. So if your x's and y's cancel out and you get something like 4 equals 7, um, that's no solution because 4 can't be uh, 7. But if you get something where it's like 4 equals 4, then that means they're dependent um, and they're the same line. Okay. So similar to what we did when we did linear equations. Um, I'm going to do one example here. Now this right here says, um, this is an example from actually Hawks or any software, um, but it says solve by substitution. It really doesn't matter how we solve it. Substitution might be best for um, the goal here, um, but elimination is actually a lot easier to solve this one. <clears throat> so let's just take the system we have which is 2x plus 4y equals 16 and negative 6x minus 12y equals negative 48. So let's use elimination instead. So I'm going to come up here, I'm going to mark this out and I'm going to say elimination. Because it'll be quicker to solve. If I was solving this and I didn't know what the outcome was going to be, I can look at it and tell elimination might be a little bit easier. Um, so it's already lined up with everything on top of each other. The x's are over each other, the y's are over each other, the equals are over each other. So step one is good. Step two would be to 
make um, like coefficients and let's just work with the x. So I have a negative 6x and I have a 2x. Well, I can make both of these 6 if I multiply the top one by 3. So that's what I'll do. I'll take the top one, use an elimination, I'm going to multiply 3 times the equation 2x plus 4y equals 16. And when I distribute there, I will have 6x plus 12y equals 48. And then if I take the other equation and add to it the negative 6x minus 12y equals negative 48, add them together, I get 0 equals 0. So there's nowhere else to go. But 0 equals 0, we said if the x and the y are gone and the two numbers are equal, it's dependent. Dependent. So that means they're basically the same line. One is just a multiple of the other, but they're on top of each other. So it's a dependent system. So the interesting part is down here at the bottom how we're going to write that. Okay. And what they've got it here is an um, set builder notation, which you may not be familiar with, but they're writing it as an xy point. Okay. So they let y over here be itself. And they say y could be any real number. So basically what they're saying is we could have any point on this line that is the same line. Um, so if we let y be anything we want, we can calculate the x. Because remember, <clears throat> while I see y over here, this over here is x. So they're writing it as an xy point. So I can take either one of these equations, and I'm going to take the first one, 2x plus 4y equals 16, and let's solve it for x. So we will take the 4y over, so we'll have 2x equals negative 4y plus 16, and then we'll divide by 2, and we get x equals negative 2y plus 8. So there we see their representation of x. So they took this representation of x, negative 2y plus 8, and they said, well, if we pick any y, we could plug that in and calculate the x. And that's a funny notation. If you can get the dependent part right, um, then you're in good shape and try and work with this notation. But basically it's saying um, x is calculated off of y in this form where y could be anything we want it to be. So we could pick, basically if we go back to a graph, we could pick any y value we want here and use the equation to calculate the x that goes with it because we're looking at the same line on top of each other. So let's work with that and try some practice.